Hello everyone. So today is the last day in this unit. This is Classwork 3.9. We're finishing up sequences today. Throughout this unit, you've been learning about sequences and problem solving, parallel perpendicular lines, midpoint, and distance. In unit one, you started to learn about functions. But what is the difference between them? In this lesson, you're going to compare and contrast sequences with functions. And by the end of this lesson, you'll be, answered to you'll be able to answer these questions. Is a sequence a function? What is the difference between a sequence, t of n, which is another way to say a sub n, and I wanted you guys to see this other way just in case, and the function f of x with the same equation. So, consider we have the sequence, negative 5, negative 1, 3, 7. Create multiple representations, namely a table, a graph, an equation, recursive or explicit. We're going to do both just so we can get some practice for the sequence t of n. Again, t of n just meaning a sub n. It's just sometimes the way they write sequences. So let's first start with our table. So say n is our number. We have our first term, our second term, our third, fourth, and fifth terms. We'll go up to five. t of n would be what you actually get for the term. So the first one we get negative five, then we get negative one, then we get three, and then we get seven. Well, before we find the first, the next one, we got to figure out what we're adding or subtracting by, multiplying or dividing by every time. So first of all, this looks like I'm adding or subtracting because it's pretty consistent. And since it's increasing, I'm adding. To figure out, I'm going to take a term and subtract the previous term. So this is my term. This is my previous term. 7 minus 3 gives me 4. So my common difference, remember, we're back to arithmetic sequencing. My common difference is 4. And that means I'm going to add 4 to get my next term, which is 11. So now I have a table. Next we're going to do a graph. And whenever we do a graph, we are going to make sure that we just sketch it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So here's our graph. We're going to start with 1, negative 5, which would be about here. And then we're going to go 2, negative 1, and then 3, 3, 4, 7, and 5, 11. Now, do not connect the dots. And your point should be a pretty straight line. But do not connect the dots because all we have are these points. You only have a first term, a second term. Do you have a 1.5 term? Do you have a 4.5 term? If you can't say yes, then you don't have it. So this is simply just the dots. Next, we're going to make equations. So we know what our common difference is. We also need to know what our first term is, which is negative 5 because that's our first term. So now that I have that, I'm going to write my equation of a sub n is equal to my first term plus my common difference times n minus 1. Remember, this is the explicit formula. That's the explicit formula. If I was trying to find my recursive formula, I would say a sub n is equal to my common difference plus a sub n minus 1, or my per previous term. So I'm adding 4 to every term. This is my recursive formula. Now it asks, is 400 a term of the sequence? Justify your answer. So is 400 one of these numbers? Now we could keep adding 4 every time until we got there, but that's really tedious. So another thing we could do is we can plug, since this is t of n, or we've been using a sub n, I'm going to put that up here as well. We can plug 400 into a sub n and check. So it'll be 400 equals negative 5 plus 4 times n minus 1. Now there's a lot of steps you could take first here. You could add the 5. You could distribute. I'm going to choose to distribute first um, because I think overall it's going to be a little bit simpler there. So I'm going to distribute the 4 to the n and to the negative 1. So as I'm distributing, I get 400 equals negative 5. 4 times n is a positive 4n. 4 times negative 1 is minus 4. 
And now I can combine like terms. Negative 5 and negative 4 are single numbers that are on the right side, so they are like terms. In that sense, I would do negative 5 minus 4, which is negative 9, plus 4n. Now that I've combined like terms, I can collect all my like terms on one side. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. And I get 409 equals 4n. Next, we divide by 4 on both sides to get rid of that 4 in front of the n. And I get n equals, let's see, 409 divided by 4, 102.25. Now, let's talk about what this means. Can I have 102.25th term? Can I have 102 and a quarter term? No. This is not possible. Because you can't have a partial, I'm sorry I'm going off the paper here, term. So 400, or term number, what's well, a better term for that? like the pun there. So 400 is not a term of the sequence because the term number is 102.25 and I can't have a partial term number. I can have a sixth term, I can have a tenth term, I cannot have a hundred and second point twenty-five term. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You're not allowed to have a partial number, a fraction, a decimal as n. Now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it for f of x equals 4x minus 9. And then we're going to talk about how they're different. So first of all, let's do this. This time we're going to have f and f of x. So differences. I'm going to put differences over here. Some differences are the variables. Here I have x and f of x, and the other one I had n and a sub n. Another difference. Let's see. Well, first of all, let's plug these in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to use the same ones as above. Let's plug 1 in. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Plug 2 in. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 9 is negative 1. Plug 3 in. 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 9 is 3. Plug 4 in. 4 times 4 is 16. Minus 9 is 7 and plug 5 in. 5 times 4 is 20 minus 9 is 11. So as you can see we got the same numbers here as we did here. So we got the same numbers. Um, but the variables are still different. Let's do our graph next. So if we graph this we have 1, negative 5, 2, negative 1, 3, 3, 4, 7, and 5, 11. But this time, whenever you have an f of x, whenever you have an equation in slope-intercept form, we can draw a line. So it's also different this time because we can have a line instead of points. Other than that, our equation for this is f of x equals 4n minus 9. So it's pretty similar, but a little bit different in that the 4 is the same in both of them. The slope and the common difference are the same, but this has negative 9 and this has negative 5. That would be the main difference here. So now, for the function f of x equals 4x minus 9, is it possible to have an output of 400? Explain why or why not. So let's see. An output would be my f of x, so I'm plugging 400 in for my output. After I plug 400 in, it equals 4x minus 9. We add 9 on both sides because I'm trying to find x. 409 equals 4x. Divide by 4. And 102.25 is equal to x. Is that possible? Are you allowed to have a decimal or a fraction for x? And yes, it is possible because x can be any number. So it is possible. X is allowed to be any number. So, looking at this, what are the big differences? The main thing I see as a big difference is the points versus the line. 
And what this line tells us is that any number on here is allowed, whereas what these points tell us is only specific numbers are allowed, specifically specific numbers for n. T of n or a sub n, not as important, but n only has specific numbers. In fact, you can't have negative n, so this couldn't go this way, it can only go up. Here, this line has arrows showing it can go in either direction. Either way. Now, following along with this theory, the big question we had is, is a sequence a function? So let's look at our two main rules to be a function. The x's can't repeat. And these are essentially our x's. Please dial Gotta love interruptions. These are our x's, and they don't repeat. So in that sense, it is a function. And we have a graph right here. If we were to do vertical lines anywhere on this graph, this graph would pass. It is a function. So is a sequence a function? It's a huge debate in math. It passes the rules to be a function. It is just considered to be discrete, meaning separate points instead of a line, whereas the f of x function is continuous meaning it's any point along that line. So those are the big differences between a sequence and a function. A sequence is set points, whereas a function is a continuous line.